We've known for a while that more XR devices are coming from Google, but we got some news recently that they're going to be coming in 2026. And I think this is a really interesting development given the struggles that they've had at meta platforms and also with Apple. Google is taking a very different approach. And now with the success of Gemini and the fact that Gemini is now being used more than ChatGPT, I think this could be another real phenomenal use case. And this could be the kind of hardware that you, we're using AI for in the future. That's why this is a huge deal for Google to get out in front of all these competitors before they figure out what the form factor is, whether that's gonna be a watch, whether it's gonna be glasses. That's why I think this is such big news. So I wanna go through exactly what we found out this week. My name is Travis Holliam. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And if you want more from me, check out my newsletter, Asymmetric Investing. That's where I hold shares of Alphabet. That stock is one of my biggest holdings because I saw the potential when the stock was trading for 15, 16 times earnings. Now the market is starting to realize that this is a high potential stock, not only in artificial intelligence, but also in other devices. I'll get to where that shows up in their financials in just a second, but you can subscribe there on the newsletter or also the memberships here on YouTube if you wanna know exactly what I'm doing with my portfolio every single month. Let's dig into exactly what we found out. This came out December 8th, the Android show, new features in Galaxy XR and a look at future devices. Again, we knew some of these devices were coming. We just didn't know exactly what they were gonna look like. They announced some of their partners uh, at IO recently. But today they wanted to expand on what's next for the next for the Android XR ecosystem. So that's where they're really branding this is Android. So it's under sort of the Android. They're gonna be the operating system. They're not gonna be necessarily producing devices. So when you think about the other two players in the market, Apple and Meta, they're really vertically integrated players. So they want to make the hardware, they want to make the operating system, they want to have their own store, they want it to tie into their existing ecosystems. Android is going to be a little bit different. They're more of a modular player. And typically that's going to be the battle is vertically integrated versus modular. And the reason that modular could be really important in this business is because I don't think we're going to have the exact same device, everybody with an iPhone, for example, in the future, if something like glasses or even watches are something that's going to be more used in the future. If you think about something like glasses, people like different kinds of glasses. They like different form factors, different sizes. Maybe they want different features. That's something you'll be able to do if you're Samsung, if you're Warby Parker. With an operating system from Google and Android, you're not necessarily going to be able to do that with an Apple operating system. That's probably just going to be the Apple device, just like it is with the watch. So that's kind of the way to think about the differences between their incentives and their business models. But they're releasing some updates. They talked a little bit about how you're going to be able to connect your PC so basically use this as, as an extended screen. Again, this is one of those things that I'm a little bit skeptical this is gonna be widely used, but maybe on an airplane, you wanna watch some YouTube videos. That could be a really solid use case. And then they have these digital likenesses. Again, a little bit skeptical that this is gonna be a great use case, but having screens and more the ability to add more screens without having to actually purchase a screen, just using the glasses that are on your head, may be a really good use case for the future. But this is really the important piece, building the XR ecosystem. So again, Google's not necessarily building devices, they're building the operating system and the ecosystem that other companies are gonna leverage. So they have two kinds of glasses here. AI glasses is what they're calling them. First, they're gonna be doing AI glasses with no screen. So think about this like a pair of glasses that maybe has a camera on it so it can see the world and you have artificial intelligence incorporated or you're able to at least communicate with your phone. So now you're able to ask your AI questions, maybe say, what sort of tree is that? Maybe you can look at a menu and ask what an ingredient is. All the things that you can use the Gemini app with the camera assist for, that would be kind of the ways to think about that. The other thing is gonna be an, a display screen. So display AI glasses, those are gonna come second, but it's gonna be a similar thing, but now you're gonna have the heads up display. So there you can think about incorporating things like maps. So you're on a bike ride, you're wearing these glasses, you can have a map just displayed, hey, this is, where you, this is where you should go. Or you talk to the AI and you say, hey, where should I go for dinner? Show me directions and it shows you exactly where you can go for dinner. So those are the kind of use cases that I think of when I think about these kinds of glasses. And again, Google is gonna be building the ecosystem or the operating system. So it's a much lower risk device. And the other thing that I think is interesting is this is an extension of Gemini. Gemini is already widely used it's already a very popular platform. You probably already have a lot of your information in the Google ecosystem. If you're just able to talk to that with the glasses that are right there on your face, that could potentially be the next hardware paradigm. And that's really when we start to see shifts in 
technology is when the hardware changes. So you go from the mainframe to the PC, to the mobile device. What's the future of AI? Is it gonna be the same mobile device that we have today? Or is it going to be something like glasses? There's also gonna be wired XR glasses. So this is gonna be a little bit more like VR glasses that we have seen from other companies over the past deck. So you can see here, you're gonna need more compute power to be able to build this kind of a world. But that would be the idea there is you're able to bring a little bit more power into that with the wired XR glasses. And again, Google's talking about an ecosystem. This update officially opens up to development for AI glasses, giving developers tools and APIs to design the kind of helpful augmented experiences we're seeing for partners like Uber and get your guide. So they're gonna have other companies be working on the hardware and other developers developing for the ecosystem. This is exactly where you want Google to be. So now let's look at where does this actually show up in their financials? And again, I just can't get over this. I was buying shares of Google, $150, $160 per share, just absolutely skyrocketed over the past few months. And I don't think the company has changed all that much, still in about the same strategic position. The market is just starting to realize what that potential is. Okay, so this is the KPIs on fiscal AI. And what they do here is they break down everything that Google or Alphabet reports and where you're gonna see this show up is in subscriptions, platforms, and devices. At least this is primarily where this is gonna be. Even Gemini subscriptions are gonna fall into subscriptions, platforms, devices. Devices are going to be obviously the direct devices that Alphabet or Google is making. Platforms is gonna be things like Android. So this is the growth rate that you see. Let's not quite go back so far. Let's go since 2020 growth rate of 17% compound annual growth rate, $46 billion business. This is exactly where we're going to see this XR. This is exactly where, where we're going to see Android XR show up on their financials. So if this is success, successful, if they do get start to get more adoption, Alphabet will have a financial impact. You're going to see revenue from these devices. The other thing to wonder is, is there going to be a SaaS model attached as well? Is there something like a Gemini Ultra subscription gonna be tied to this? That's almost $200 a month. I think you can get that for a little bit less right now. But does that become a recurring revenue model? That's something we don't really have with current mobile devices. You buy your device. Yes, there's recurring revenue with certain things that, that have been added over time, like iCloud storage, like all the purchases that we, that we make on app stores. But there's not a But there's not a subscription just to use the device. Maybe that's the way that things go in the future with AI. But this is the kind of thing that puts Google and Alphabet in a very good position for the long term with AI and with hardware. I like that they're extending Android into more of these new products and allowing other companies to develop those products for them. So maybe Samsung doesn't get the hardware right, but Warby Parker does. That's the advantage that you have being the ecosystem, the operating system company, I would much rather bet today on Alphabet figuring, figuring this out and that entire ecosystem of partners, partners figuring out what the future of AI devices and AR, XR looks like rather than betting that Apple can figure it out or that Meta can figure it out. So that's one of the reasons that I'm invested in Alphabet stock. But let me know what you think about these new devices and the Android XR platform. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next time.